applause. Thank you. So, really quickly, um, Blue Blue is a language uh, education platform uh, which enables natural language acquisition for consumption of content uh, at user's level that is interesting and relevant to that user with no grammar. Just putting it out there because this will uh, be relevant to our fuck ups <laughs> and how they happened. And it's funny that I'm here today telling how we fuck up before I will go to the WSA jury tomorrow and all the attendees to try to show how good we are. So I hope that you just take the lessons that we learned and nothing else. <laughs> Um, so the first fuck up um, dates back to 2013, then Blue Blue was really just a very tiny um, initial beta version. Uh, we won our first startup event and we got featured in TechCrunch unexpectedly. And what do you think that what happens to a company when they get featured on TechCrunch? Global traffic starts flowing. And as a tiny startup, are you prepared for that? Are your servers prepared for that? So guess what message you send to the world and they crash. Luckily this happened to us very early in the day and we managed to learn this lesson and knock the wood. Um, our servers haven't crashed ever since yet. <laughs> um, the second fuck up, and this is a major one, actually is partly related to this uh, unexpected but really desired recognition. So in, in tech world, we hear all the time that if you build a truly amazing product, it will take care of users by itself. Um, nobody tells though that you have to make sure that there is a certain size of that initial user base or that even that initial size might not be sustainable forever. So with all this um, recognition in Baltic states across the startup scene, we started a lot of organic traffic flowing in. We got so proud of ourselves that we built this product that takes care of the users that we forgot to look at the statistics. Wrong. Never ever do that because the global, you know, the, the, the organic traffic might not be sustainable to the extent that you can start focusing on completely different things. Um, and actually, regardless how breakthrough or innovative or revolutionary your product idea is, um, you have to remember that there are certain market fundamentals that potentially won't change. Um, so let me give you an example. Then Uber has revolutionized taxi industry. They didn't really change how much people need to get from point A to point B. Or when Airbnb revolutionized travel industry, they didn't really change how much people go on holidays. Whereas us, we thought that if we build this amazing platform, everybody will start learning languages and everybody will do that forever. So instead of trying to change the user behavior with your amazing, brilliant idea, we learned that we actually had to focus on our product um, and let the user behavior follow rather than do it the other way around. Um, and in addition to all of this, so teaching uh, languages without any grammar and, and trying to you know, uh, get everybody learning languages. We also stood up against all the conventional um, language courses. Because we don't teach grammar and we find ourselves different in that way, we said no to even terms like language learning. We said language acquisition is what we will go with. Also, um, we said that we will not do any kind of courses. It's all different because that's what we are, different. Um, but in reality, what happened was that um, when you speak to your customers or potential customers in a language that they don't understand you and you're trying to convince them to learn the languages so that everybody understands them, it doesn't really work. <laughs> so um, we wanted to be so unconventional that we found ourselves actually making, starting to make profits when we finally packed our learning method into a course and we started using language learning as synonymous to language acquisition. So again, just be careful um, with the language that you're using in front of your customers. Um, with all that idea of the product will take care of the users, um, we obviously left the marketing and user acquisition for itself. Uh, so we rolled up our sleeves, got the best tools out, hired two more developers, two more designers, 
um, and got to work. Zero marketing people, zero UX people. And we started building and rebuilding and rebuilding the blue and rebuilding it again just to make it so awesome that everybody can use it and everybody's amazed by it. Um, and I keep on mentioning marketing people um, because, um, and don't get me wrong, um, but for what I found is that uh, developers think differently than the general audience that we are aiming um, our products to. So sometimes some solutions and some best practices are not necessarily um, best practices for the general audience. So unfortunately, we spend 95% of our relatively small investment building and rebuilding Blue Blue with no intervenience of marketing people who had have told that actually, guys, you're doing this wrong. There should be this button there or this button there. Um, but at some point, we started realizing that, okay, the organic growth is not happening as expected. So we started doing marketing. Uh, Claudio is the co-founder of Blue Blue, and he started doing what he knows best. He started doing uh, PR in Lithuania. That's Lithuanian. Um, which is, if you're aiming for global recognition, probably not the biggest market and not the best market to start with by doing PR. So what happened was uh, Claudio spent a lot of effort and a lot of good energy um, trying to start getting recognized globally through Lithuania, which didn't really work out either. <laughs> so guess what? Money did run out. <laughs> um, yes, the kind of the biggest fuck up if you see your balance sheet and you kind of notice that the income is not really covering your operational costs and there is no investor who is ready to throw in money into your business, probably at some point this will happen. <laughs> and at that point, we started looking in marketing. And lucky for us, Blue Blue is truly an amazing platform um, which managed to generate organic traffic and organic initial funding for our current marketing campaigns, which um, are kind of changing, you know, taking what we've learned and, and applying it to grow in the future. And the last fuck up um, is a B2B deal that we managed to secure with Barclays in Lithuania. Amazing. Um, however, the platform wasn't really ready for what we promised. And instead of going back to Barclays and asking them, guys, what would you like to see? How can we do it better for you? We hid and continued to build Blue Blue. <laughs> um, so really quickly, a lot of fuck up stories to learn and you can ask me any questions or maybe later at the conference I can expand on the details of each of them <laughs> if you're interested. <laughs> any questions? <laughs> Uh, the question was, um, now that we switched from focusing almost 100% to product development, budget-wise, to marketing-wise, um, what's the percentage of income, right, from the, from the organic versus the paid, the, the users? The percentage of users coming from organic traffic versus the paid traffic. Um, very good question. And currently, um, we're seeing that uh, our paid customers uh, seventy percent of our organic traffic, roughly. Um, so yes, basically with Barclays, we went in because we knew some people, um, and we sat down and we said, you know, we will give you this tool that will 
uh, monitor your employees' uh, performance, how much they're learning. We will give you all these statistics and we will you know, report to you. And if your employees are not doing something with the platform, we will go to them, kind of try to encourage them and email them and, and talk to them and bring to the platform. Um, basically, our statistics part of the thing, because we do have statistics right now and it's working, thanks God, um, but it wasn't there yet. So essentially, we were building it while you know the users were already using it and we had to report back. Um, plus, the reports were not working the way Barclays wanted it to, do, to, to report. So basically, they wanted to see only their employees. And we had like a general leaderboard where Barclays employees would sit within other users as well. And the kind of, you know, getting people to, motivating people to learn. Um, again, we didn't really have resource to actually do it. Um, so, yes, these things. <laughs> Shift your focus from marketing to Lithuania to the rest of the world, right? Uh, with limited resources, how do you do it? What do you do? Okay, um, so the question was um, when we decided to focus on marketing the limited resources and to kind of focus globally rather than actually um, just in Lithuania. Um, so basically, we looked at the data, which is, again, very important. <laughs> Looking at data can give you a lot of answers. Um, but because we had a lot of organic traffic flowing into Blue Blue for like over two years, uh, we just really looked at the countries um, that are driving most of the traffic and where the most of the pay customers are coming from um, and we started to focusing that little budget on those markets which yeah which is actually partly true because um, the biggest market for us is US however um, you know running campaigns in US are very expensive so instead we kind of went with Germany Italy and Spain which are the further markets in terms of active number of active and paying users Just going back, at the very start you said um, Google's platform, they have language acquisition without any for grammar. I'm, I'm more curious, how do you teach language without having... <laughs> 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 I'm looking for guys who tried learning Mandarin. I know how to order food and that's about it. So, um, what, what's your take on that? I mean, because you guys are doing from language acquisition to language learning. Yes. Um, basically, that's part of my tomorrow's presentation, but I can give you a quick intro. Um, so basically, it is, um, it is proven by our own experience and also some professional research that grammar in language acquisition doesn't play a key role. Um, that it's enough to consume content that is interesting and relevant to you. That means that, you know, like if I ask you to now uh, go to primary school and learn about, I don't know, flowers or, I don't know, colors, that might potentially not be interesting to you as an adult. Um, so instead, we supply interesting content. So on Blue Blue, we create content. Um, we record, we got native people to record content which is interesting and which enables people to understand uh, the context, the content from the context. So basically, that's how, and Blue Blue um, is a system where you click on, as a user, you click on words to indicate to the system what you know. So Blue Blue learns what you know in order to provide following content at your level. <laughs> I can send it to you. <laughs> Thank you for the brief introduction. All right, any questions um, will be, be afterwards, all right? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>